You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. You're listening to Marriage Takeover with Eric and Tamika Thompson, helping to enrich your marriage. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Marriage Takeover. Hello, everyone. I'm Tamika. And I'm your boy, E. Rock, Neil. We are going to go ahead and get started with the part two of What's Your Role? So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us on today. We appreciate your time. We appreciate you. Um, You want to go ahead and start off with prayer? Let's go and let us please, um, let's pray. Father, heaven, Lord God, we thank you, God, we honor you. We give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father, because you are an awesome God. We thank you, oh God, because of your goodness. We thank you because of your grace, God. We thank you because of your awesomeness. God, we just ask now, Father, that you forgive us of our sins, cleanse yes. and wash us of all iniquity, O God, by our thoughts and our deeds, Father. God, we ask that you create in us a clean heart, O God, renewing yes. us the right spirit, O God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray right now, Lord God, that your will be done through this broadcast, O God. Yes, God, we Lord. pray that you heal, deliver, save, O God, and set free in the name of Jesus. God, we bless you now. God, yes. we ask that right now, Father God, that the, that the, that the words of our mouth, O God, Father God, that the words that you bring forth out of our mouth, Father God, that it be a seed planted, uh, God, it be water that waters the seed that has already been planted. Yes. And God, that bring peace to your people, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we bless you. We tell you thank you, Father. We say this prayer in your down son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing today? Well, great, awesome. I know I'm talking like live audience, but um, today is today is awesome. Uh, oh, I don't even know where to start. Go ahead, baby, help me out because for some reason I'm drawing blank. <laughs> We just want to thank you guys again for tuning in. We left off last week with starting off on the What's Your Role. Um, Before we do go further, too, I just want to let the family out in North Carolina, South Carolina know that we are praying for you all. Um, We do know some family and and friends that are affected by um, some of the flooding. So we are praying for you all, um, praying that you're safe and all that great stuff. Let's just just take one quick moment. Let's just say a prayer for for those things that's been affected and the people. So, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, we just thank you, oh God, for your awesomeness. Yes, God. God, for you already know all the individuals, God, in North Carolina and South Carolina, Virginia, Georgia, God, all yes, that was affected God. by the weather, oh God. Father God, we pray right now, oh God, that you give comfort to those that have lost their, to those yes, families, Lord. to those that have lost their lives, oh God. Give comfort to those that have lost those prized possessions, oh God. God, I pray right now, Father God, that you continue to let them know, Father, that your word is still true, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, for you are God of restoration. Yes. So, God, I ask right now, Father God, that you comfort those people right now, Father. God, I ask that you heal even, God, the hurt, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I ask that you give strength, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, I ask that you continue to even build them up, oh God. In the name of Jesus, and God, we thank you right now. Father God, for as you did with Abraham, Father, you kept a ram in the bush. So, God, all things, everything just don't, don't happen just because. But, God, there is a blessing, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. So, God, I pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, for each each, each and every individual, God. Father God, that you heal, deliver, and set free, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, have your way. Restore right now, God, and we bless you, God. We give you the glory now in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. So this is Mayor's Takeover for those of you who are watching us for the very first time and tuning in. Everything that we do is Christian-based um, principles. It's coming out of the word of God. We are not licensed counselors. We have just developed and created this platform just because we have 
um, been through and experienced a lot in our marriage over the 20 plus years that we have been married. And we just want to give back. There were some things that we wish we would have known throughout this process, some things that we would have been, you know, wish were available to us as tools and resources. Yeah. And uh, we just want to offer that to you guys so everybody can have a successful marriage and to let you know that you are not alone. You're not and alone. And to give you hope yeah. throughout your marriage so that you can continue to and survive just as Christ would want you to. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in. There were some things if you didn't catch last month, go ahead and um, after this, watch the, the recap. I know, is there a game coming on tonight? Yes, there's a game coming on tonight. So we're going to honor everybody's time so we can go through the game, okay? You guys, it is football season, and we want to make sure we honor everybody's time. We're not going to rush Jesus, but we're just going to speed it right along. Let the church say amen. Amen. Um, let us, um, um, yes, yeah. hey, I'm going to tell you something, man. I, um, this has been truly a blessing for me, for uh, for me just to uh, have a, I guess I say a platform just to really share our testimony and how um, God has allowed us to um, get to where we are. And uh, it was funny because me and wife were sitting back and sitting there and thinking, not thinking, but we looked at because of uh, how many marriages. Um, I don't want to say it fell apart. Let's just say it came to a halt, if you will. And, up of, you know, around those uh, individuals that was with us around that same time when we was all young coming through. But yet I thank God for being a God of restoration. Um, I thank God for being a God of um, being a forgiving God. Because one thing that when you, when you begin to understand the cross. Oh, yeah. Man, when you understand the cross, well, help me to understand the cross. Well, the cross of what Jesus gave up the ghost, he gave it up for us. The blood that washes white as snow, the blood that, the love, the blood of God's love that covers a multitude of sin. So I gotta say, when you understand the cross, man, then when you look at your significant other and say, my God, the cross, because God knows coming back <laughs> off his road, that's what I had to say, hallelujah. But God is good. I ain't going to get into that piece right now because God <laughs> is good. Hallelujah. You got anything to add before we go into it? No, no, no. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay. Now, we're going to jump in. Well, I would, huh? We got a lot to cover. We're going to take our time. Amen? <laughs> Let the church say amen. Um, Listen, everybody. So I have been trying to study this. I have been trying to get a lot of studying in because I want to make sure that the um, content that you're giving that, like she said, is strictly is is strictly Bible based. Now I want you to understand we're not so um, heavenly minded to where we're no right. earthly good. Right. So I'm gonna tell you now. I know Jesus, but I, what you tapping for? <laughs> so we can get started. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm babbling. That's what she's trying to say. I'm babbling. <laughs> So, Yo, we went back and started watching some of the videos. Hilarious. So y'all inbox us if y'all see we acting crazy, looking crazy. Please, if I need to straighten <laughs> something up. Us, let us know. This is a raw version of us. It's not, you know, prepped and all that great stuff. But we're going to go ahead and dive in. So yep. what is the meaning of I know. The microphone is on the wrong side. I know, but I can't fix it. Okay. You, you get started on all right, the listen. In the marriage. Can y'all hear us? Everybody? <laughs> can you hear us? Yes, baby. Okay, no. great. All right. Here we go. Now, uh, last week, last week, last month, we covered, we talked about as far as the roles, um, far as in marriage. But then, as I began, as I began to study, I was like, huh. A lot of uh, sometimes, a lot of us really begin to take one one another for granted, and that's where we begin to literally mess up when we take each other for granted. That's our one piece. I think I covered that, but for some odd reason, we might touch on that piece as well. Um, and then also for, uh, you know what, let me just go ahead and go into it. All right, for what I had to look at, one thing was like, what is literally the meaning of marriage? And what I got out, out, of, out of Webster was, it's the state of being united as spouses and a consensual and contractual relationship regarding the law. The mutual relationship of married people, wedlock, the state of being married, and intimate or close union. And so, I and and looking at this, 
Where, when did the first marriage take place? Now, oh, well, for one, let me just tell you how deep this thing just got. Babe, you can't just sit here and look like my trophy. You got to say something. I am. We're good. Okay, I'm just saying. It's not time yet. I'm in my role. It's not time yet. Uh, not, <laughs> now if you want to be in my role. Woo, five minutes ago, pray for me, man. Pray for me. <laughs> Oh, woo, that just got all under my skin. No, <laughs> but, um, but no, but listen, if you, if you have your Bible, do me a favor. I really want you to turn to um, Genesis uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 23, uh, 23, 24, and 25. Verse 23 says, and Adam said, now this is bone of my bone. Let me pull this up because I think I don't need to start right there. I actually kind of want to go back a little bit. Um, because you have to understand what God, you have to under, you have to know basically, not basically, but you have to know what Christ did. Now, you know, a lot of us know, um, what God did in the, in the beginning and what took place was, you know, he caused a deep, a deep sleep to come up, to come upon, um, Adam. And from the deep sleep that he caused to come upon Adam, he took the rib out. But then look at this. One thing that you have to already know, one thing that you have to already know is that God already knows your need before you even know it. Well, what do you mean by that? Look at Genesis 2, verse 18. He said, and the, and the Lord God said, it is not good for man, it is not good that man should be alone. Boom. He already said it. At this point, Adam has already been created. Everything's already been done. Now God is just sitting back looking at Adam. So what do you think God is doing even in your marriage? He is sitting back looking at you. So what does that tell me? God already knows your need before you even need it. Well, let me continue reading. And then God said what? I will make him a help me. For him. One, that already explains the first role of your wife. Ah, and she is to help you. Can I get an amen, somebody? This type of video, I'm going to give you five okay, seconds. Amen. Five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead. Hey, Ray, I can always count on you, my brother. Bless you. <laughs> so, but understand this. And so understand one thing, that in your marriage, guess what? God has already met your need, period. It's just that we got to get to that point to where we recognize that God has already met it. Because we still talk about our, oh, I wish I had this, or I wish I had that. You got to look at this thing. God created Adam, excuse me, God created Eve at the perfect time. God brought Eve along at the perfect time. Well, why do you say that? Because at this point, Adam has... <laughs> This is a little something for the fellas. I hope y'all understand this. Because at, at this point, Adam has already did all the naming. So there, there was no need for an argument on what a name should be. <laughs> Adam had already done everything that God had created him to do. So now Adam is now looking at everything that God had did and everything that God has done through him in the creation of, 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 of the earth. Now, God is looking at Adam and saying, it is not good for man to be alone. See, that right there, just in case of any single people I'm um, looking, brother, I'm just saying right now, God already knows. But when you set it down and begin to seek him, he'll begin to show you some things. All right, back to the married people. So now, check this out. So I'm in verse, I'm in verse 18. And so God said, I will make him a helper, a help meet for him. So God looked at his need. Take, oh my God, I thank you. Take this out. God had all God looked at at his need. First, God looked at the garden. <laughs> then he looked at one man to tend the garden. So now he says, Oh, he needs to help me. Why do he need to help me? If you jump, if you go to Ecclesiastes verse uh, chapter 9, uh, chapter 4, I'm sorry, verse 9, it says, 
two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Mm. <laughs> ten, verse 10, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, and there's no one to help him up. So what are you saying? So basically, if anything takes place, even in your, if, if anything takes take place in your marriage, if you are linked together, it don't even matter, this is still be at all. But what I'm saying is that if you were to take a fall, guess what? You have the other, the spouse there to say, hey, let me help you up. Hey, you can do it. Hey, to be that one to give you that encouraging word, but guess what? If you're willing to take things on your own, then guess what? Who's going to be there to know even when you fall? You got I'm, some I'm just going to add, that. have you ever noticed that whenever you and your marriage, you're up against the, like you're up against the wall. Everybody has come up against you. You're up against a situation where you are about to fall or, you, or something has happened. Um, for example, if you lose a family member or if finances are tight or if something is devastating is going on. I remember even with our son when he was going through some stuff at school and the challenges were going up. I mean, we were just literally up against the wall. When we're up against the wall about to fall, that's when our marriage is, is bonded and we're made stronger. Oh, man. Like, that's when we grow the most. That's oh, when man. we learn the most. Yeah. That's when we come much closer together spiritually, physically, um, emotionally, mentally. Like, that's where we grow through that adversity. <laughs> that's, that is it right there. That is it. So I'm going I'm to tell you, Katrina, you better make sure you get that during work done. I'm going to tell you that, but God is good. <laughs> <laughs> But listen, just as, just as she said, now, verse, and also verse 11, again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? I want you to think about it. Think about hypothermia. How does that set in? When you buy yourself cold, shivering, that's how it set in. But what is the one thing that can stop hypothermia? Aha! Yes, Lord. Somebody heat. Somebody heat. So you better get close. Ah, oh, baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> Hallelujah. So then, and then it says, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And guess what? A core is not quickly broken. I love verse 12 out of Ecclesiastes 4 because it's letting you know, even though there is the two, the two can still be broken. Right? Y'all see this? Why are you pushing me? I'm telling me back for the room. <laughs> so, but imagine when you have Jesus intertwined. Oh, hold on, baby. Don't show it's me. all right. Y'all know I like to demonstrate. We use the wrong chord. We use the wrong chord. <laughs> but anyway, we ain't going to choke ourselves. But now we have, now we have the chord. We can't be easily broken. They got to see it. Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all see the chord? So now we can't be easily broken. That's where Jesus, <laughs> that's where Jesus come into play. Amen. And so I want you to understand that, man, when you keep, when you keep your foundation of your marriage in God, oh, man, just, you have to just literally expect God to do the awesome, the, the, to basically to show up strong. Why? Because, one, he already know your needs. Now, let's go back to Genesis real quick. Genesis 2. So now, everything, 19 and 20, well, that's where, you know, God formed the beast, Adam named everybody. But then, look at 21. 21 says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, one of his ribs, and close them and close up the flesh and close up the flesh and stare thereof. Right there, God just performed just performed the first bone transplant. <laughs> yes. The first surgery just took in place. But the first surgery that took place was guess what? It was to form man help me. The first transplant was work with that baby. To, uh, Work with that. The first transplant was to create 
Man, help me. Right. Man, look, look at look at man. Look at what God is. I had already set up here. He took the man to make woman. So right now, man, oh man, if you if you if people if you can understand how deep this thing goes, because it begin to literally follow. And when you begin to look at the church itself, but we talk about marriage, so we're gonna we're gonna keep it right there. So, but when we understand the magnitude of marriage, the strength of marriage, the power of marriage, oh my God, you'll be amazed on the things that would take place even in your home. But that's oftentimes we can't sit self aside. Right, right. So I thank God for for that. And so let's go back to this rib thing. I'm gonna tell you, when God created Eve, he took the rib out of the side. Where is your rib located? It's located on your side. So therefore I don't like to walk behind my wife. And she don't like to walk behind me. Why? Because we're joining at the real. That's my real. And then when you look at verse 23, that's when Adam said. <laughs> Wait a minute. Verse 22. I like to say this piece. Verse 23. I'm sorry. And Adam said, now. This is now. Bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. She shall be called, whoa, man, <laughs> because she was taken out of man. Adam took a minute and be like, yeah, I I know, because I'm saying at this time, he didn't know they was naked, right? But he says, whoa, man, ooh, God, I thank you. Why? Because now I got somebody to talk to. I got somebody, one, help me with this hard work in this here garden. Because I'm saying, remember, remember, Satan ain't intervened just yet. So now he's looking at a time of being lonely. See that? But he didn't know what lonely was. Why? Because he talked with God. But he is now in a place. And not, everybody want to call him. They know he's, baby. Tell him he's busy. Tell him, tell him to jump on Facebook. You know we. You know what time it is. This so, song never goes off, y'all. So, uh, they, except Sunday. It's like, yo, we're busy. No, we're busy. Stop it. So, um, and so, fellas, do me a favor. I want you to look at your wife and say, whoa, ooh, man, Jesus, some, ooh, yeah, I might have to throw a sheet over this for a second. <laughs> but, um. But you got to say in the air, baby, because I don't want no, to do all the, all the talking. You're doing good, honey. And, and <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right, Ross. Walk out of a deep sleep. Surprise, surprise. So, <laughs> uh, and, so, and so, un- so understand, man, the awfulness of, of, what God is, of what God is doing. And so when you begin to even look at bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, remember, we we together in this. You are now my help me. And so now I'm I'm here. You're mine. I'm yours. You're mine. Because those of you that have kids, when you get the, a DNA test, guess what? Their DNA matches the both of you. Oh now. Hear me. So when you when you when God created the little one in you, guess what? It is now you. Oh my God today. My God today. So when you begin to look at, so I, I don't want to follow it. I ain't gonna to go too deep into it. We just gonna stick on the marriage piece. But when you just when you begin to look at what God is doing, and see the thing is, we can all we can always want to join in to to. Well, I'll tell you back. You know, I'm gonna keep it moving. Sex is one thing we always want to do, but that's not the one thing that we don't choose to make it a prize, if you will. And this is what I'm saying. Oftentimes we take sex as just being the one the one means of intimacy. But it's not. See, we gotta understand you can just be intimate. Kind of stuff, y'all. Just by sitting here. Right. 
talking and just enjoying one another's presence. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because all the time, how do you be intimate with God? You be intimate with God when you just learn to sit when you not learn to, I'm sorry, but when you just sit that time aside. Right. Just God. Laying before his presence. I know I don't know your thoughts, but what's on your mind for me? Right. What's what what do you have planned for me? Because I can I can tell you, God, that I can tell you what I got planned for you. What is that? I just want to be close. Yeah. So I'm telling you, I like to me, I like to, I kind of fell off a little bit, so I got to kind of get back on it. I don't mind. I'll be honest with you. The way she was acting on the road, I don't know. <laughs> she, she might have to come after this part. No, we <laughs> so I'm we just saying. back off the road, literally at like 6.30, back off the road from Pennsylvania. And so it was a long trip. I was tired. Whatever. And... Can't tell, though, huh? <laughs> Say, I know it. Stop, tell her to stop I'm lying. I'm tired. Yeah, tell her to stop lying. And so, uh, and so understand that you got to literally take that time out to even strengthen your bond. Right. Because the right. thing is, your very core, you can sometimes put on put a strain on the core to where you'll even forget that it's even there. And it'll just break. But see the thing is, man, do you know God and God really didn't intend for divorce? Go check out Matthew. I'm not gonna get it deep in that, but it didn't intend for divorce. Why? Because you already know that he is the glue. But if you don't get that quality time, and I just feel the spirit, I just really feel the spirit saying, man, take that quality time, date. Date. All the times we think that we got to, in order for us to get married, we got to date. No, dog, it don't even work like that. Honestly, we're supposed to marry to date. I heard Pastor Evans, I uh, know, Pastor um, Evans out of Texas, he taught on that. Man, you marry today. We don't, you don't, it's not the time to hang up because now you got your, you now you got your peace. It's not that time because how can you be a help me and you don't even enjoy the, and you don't even enjoy what you're in? I'm sorry, I got to get a little loose. <laughs> oh, Lord. And, and you don't even, and, yeah, and you don't even enjoy what you're in. So I'm, we're going to jump right into these roles, but check this out. Check out what, what God says in Matthew 19 and 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and, and they swine shall be one flesh. So I just said, Listen. You now have just separated yourself from your immediate family, and you come entangled with me, baby. Hey, now you, now you, now you entangled. I'm sorry, I got a little loud in her ears. And now you entangled, you entwined with what he has given. And then verse 6 says, wherefore, they are no more twined but one flesh. We don't went from being we've been we don't went from being entangled to becoming one. Right. But therefore God have joined together, let no man put us under. Y'all know if you can come together as one, as one, if you can't come together as one, then you're just gonna stay in twenty. When you when you come together as one. There's just so many blessings that comes in you being unified right. as one. Right. And I know when we first got married, you guys, that one thing was a, a challenge for us. Although we were together and we were away from family, he was the youngest and is a mama's boy. Stop it. So when you are separating yourselves and it says to cleave to your wife, there are some times where it's difficult to take that place or, or to make that shift happen. And it caused a rift in our marriage initially just because, you know, I'm looking for him to stand up and to be the man. He didn't have that male figure in his life. And then his mom was, you know, still trying to make certain things take place. And it was like, whoa, like, wait, wait a minute. Like, what's, what are we doing? <laughs> 
And it wasn't until he made that shift to fully cleave and for us to be that one um, where we actually started to grow and started to develop in that. Do you want to talk about, like, what made that shift occur for you? or? Uh, the thing is, I was – the thing is, is that I said, okay, and I, and, I, and I said, and I said, I said, wait a minute, Mom. I said, I love you dearly. I don't know. What really caused me was just like, okay, I got peace on this side. But then when I try to go from that side to this side, then there's, there's other issues. So then I had, to, I had to, okay, wait a minute. What is working for my house? And so, I mean, it's not just me because wife had to deal with it. She had to deal with the same thing as well. I did, I did. And so, and, but the one thing that I love about my mom, she said to me, she said, well, baby, I see you got it under control. I'm going to fall back. <laughs> and I said, what? Well, that's all I had to say. But I said, okay, wait a minute, mom, I got it. I said, you raised a great man. I said, so I'm going to need you to trust me with this one. Right. Pastor Lee, hey, girl, how you doing? So <laughs> I thank God for having that mother that said, okay, I understand. You got it. But understand, I'm here for your, like, for wisdom and stuff of that nature. And so I want you to understand it because I think oftentimes a lot of married people take that portion um, too far different. Understand when it says that, Husband, when you find your wife, you cleave to it, and mommy and daddy them, you know, you leave all of that. Understand, it comes to where now your house now has just been separated. When I say your house, I'm talking about this, just right here. Now, if you know, because everybody got a, got a mom and them that live with them, got a dad and them that live with them, that's fine. That's cool and all. But you have to understand if anybody – comes in this. There's one thing about being, um, what's the word, about imparting wisdom. That's one thing. But when you, when someone, someone else try to run this and not God, come on now, because now God is not getting the glory. Right. And like you, Ray said, it was it, it's respect. Ray Ross. Respect. Right. And so understand that God has to get the glory out of this. Why? Because he is the one that's entwining all this. Come on, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Y'all got it? And so understand this. And un- understand. And now, um, and so now when you get into and when you get into the roles of everything, now here we're gonna look at the two roles that God had already set. First one already being that God created man to do what to the uh to do what? To dress and tend the garden. That right there, I tell you, you got to keep your house together. Why? Because God, man, oh, my God. Check this out. Men, everything that come in your house, you name it. <laughs> Whatever you allow in your house, God has given you the authority over it. Right. Oh, my God. Then, now, check this out. Here comes the role for the wife to help you. Right. What the, I don't care, me. I don't care what you're into, or what you're doing. Well, I tell you that that <laughs> that is is that is good in the eyesight of the Lord. Hallelujah. Right. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be according to His purpose. <laughs> right. His according will. to the purpose. But your wife is to help you. So when you look at First Corinthians eleven to two. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I have delivered them to you. See, men, we got to be in, we have to be in that place of where we, of where God, thank you, God, we have to be in that place of where God can lead. See, the thing, the one, the hardest thing for us to do is literally for, submit to God. Mm, but we always good. want our wives to submit to us. That's good. But understand the order of God. 
I'm sorry. I, I apologize. But understand the order of God. I got it in Scripture. I got to find it again because I didn't type it out. But, oh, yes, it is. Drop it down to verse 3. As I delivered them to you, but I will have you know, I'm at verse 3, 1 Corinthians 11. I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So right there, you just right there, you now know, men, that the head of you is God. So therefore, we must learn to submit. Because we have to submit to the order of God. We have to submit. I, I'm t- I don't even care what you're trying to do. I still run it by I still run it by God. I ain't going to lie. I do. I still run it by uh, What you think about it? Should we do this? Should we do this? All the time, you know, I kind of go with my gut feeling if I don't hear anything. I kind of go with my gut feeling. If my gut feeling say do it, <laughs> we all in. But if my gut feeling say, nah, we don't need to do it, guess what? Bro, Tom's are feeling back. Because one time I went against my gut feeling, we ended up on the side of the road. I had to spend like $800 just to get back. So tell me what I tell you. I'm in the car. Yeah, 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 that's it, Luke. But I'm in the car. And so understand that we have to first submit unto God. And then the second part says, and the head of every woman is the man. But then when you look at even, I think it's in verse 3 in Genesis, he says that a man should have rule over thee, talking to the wife. And understand, a lot of us take that rule piece to the extreme. Oh, my God. I mean, to the extreme. Here, let me help you out real quick. Husband, in your home, you should be the prophet, the priest, and the king in your home. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, what is a prophet? A prophet is that one that hear from God. So what that requires, that requires time that you got to be with me. And I'm trying to say, I said, well, I had to tell wife real quick. I said, listen, um, listen, this is what God is doing. I'm just saying you might want to listen <laughs> because you about to you about to hit a brick wall. I'm just saying. And guess what? Even come in, even just say if you're not there yet, you still have that place where you got to be able to make the sound decision. Right. And then two, you got to be the priest. What's that? That's the one. That's the one that is the mouthpiece of God. So if you are the mouthpiece of God, so that means you shouldn't be tearing down. You should just be, you should be building up. Right, 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 right. You're, you're, if, you're, if, if, if your answer is no, then you have to let it be no. If your answer is yes, then guess what? It has to be yes. What I'm saying, it's not a waiver in this. And then you got to be the king of your home. And being the king of your home, it's not that you being served. It's that you the one that go to battle. Understand in the time of when it went, of when things were when things were drawn when things were written as far as the gospel is concerned, that was in the days of old. Those were when kings went out to battle. The president, they didn't sit in the, as, you know, the president's here. They didn't just sit in the White House chilling. No, the kings, they went out to battle. And so that means, what are you saying? I'm saying that you have to guard your front. Right. You got to guard your front. You got some man, boo? I was just going to add in, um, just stepping back just a quick bit, when it says that you are, um, the man is over the woman. So it's really important that the men have that balance because if they aren't hearing from God, if they aren't seeking God, if they aren't in a relationship with God, then they can't properly do that and uphold the wife without doing that very gently, right? if you will. It's right. not lording over them, like Ray Ross said. It's not lording over them. It's not controlling them. It's not um, demeaning them or tearing them down, but it's a gentle balance of loving them as Christ loved the church. Right. So if you don't understand your role, men, if you don't understand your role, if you are in co- covenant with God, if you are in relationship with God, then you are able to love your wife as you're supposed to love her and to guide her and to do all those amazing things with her and to make her feel like she is your help me. 
Like, you have to understand what that balance is. And oftentimes, especially when we're young in the faith or when we've been misguided, we do that the wrong way. Right. And I want to make sure that this is not the pride, the men who are holding the pride and just hovering over and, you know, overpowering and being domineering to their wife. No, you love your wife as Christ loved the church. Right. And if you aren't in that relationship with Christ, then maybe you should step back for just a moment to say, okay, God, I need you to guide me here. I need you to show me here because I don't want to mess this thing up. That was it. Oh, <laughs> but, and, and, that, and that's it right there. That's it. Because, see, you have to understand you're a team. Right. You're a team. Sometimes, I mean, you got to know, I'm sorry, I, I, it's football season. Let's go with football. You're the quarterback, bottom line. You are the quarterback. I look at my wife, she's the running back. So <laughs> we're always, we always going to do the quarter, uh, 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 halfback pass play because she's going to throw it right back to me. So you got to understand that as men. So see, the oftentimes, one thing I want to wanna get back to is the being of being submissive is that when you look at mm, the bottom jump way down there. You did. That's okay. Ah, where is my scripture? And here's the beautiful thing, too. So if, if it's the role of, because I, I struggled with this when we first got married about being submissive, but here's the beauty. If Eric is laying before God, if Eric is hearing from God, and Eric is guiding the family and protecting the house, speaking over the house, um, doing as he should because he's in that relationship with God, he's speaking with God, spending that time daily, it's easy for me to submit. Like, that's, that's a piece of cake. Like, babe, what do, you, what do you need for me to do? How can I do this? How can I help you? How can we make this better? It's easy to submit at that point because he really is hearing from God, and I don't feel like he is overpowering me. He is overbearing. I don't feel that way at all. Um, there is um, in being the helper um, to the husband. Did you want to go somewhere else, baby? Uh-huh. No, I'm, no, you're talking. So um, I'm going to let you say what you got to say. So it says that um, while all of us are called, to be helpers to others, the Bible places that special emphasis and that special thing and responsibility for the wives. And wives, we're amazing at it. So in Genesis, it tells us that God realized that it wasn't good for man to be alone, and we talked about that already. Mm-hmm. So when he helped him to do that exchange, are you going through my notes? I am. Why well, can't I can go through your notes? I mean, you can. I oh, mean, we already passed all that. God is so somewhere else. Hold on. I'm trying to, not, I'm trying to get it. Look at it. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, y'all. See, that's what I'm saying. So it's yeah. easy to be able to submit. It's easy when he, you know, when he asks to do something or when he wants me to to help him to support him in an area because he's already spending that time with God. That's where I really wanted to go. So now check this out. Like you said, it's easy to submit when the man is already in that place. It's easy to submit. But women, I'm asking you a question. Is it easy to submit when he's not in that place? Think about that. It's harder. It's a lot harder to yeah. submit in that place. But let me. But I want you to check out something, though. It's there, in verse 21, it says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. I'm sorry, I'm in Ephesians uh, 5. <clears throat> I'm in Ephesians 5, verse 21 right now. Ephesians 5, 21. Sorry, y'all. So when it says, Paul is, Paul is saying in his letter to the, to the, to the Ephesians, to I can't pronounce the word right Ephesus. now, but thank you, to to the church of Ephesus. But it says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Understand this. It's not that point, oh, I don't, oh, I'm so scared of him, so I got, no, no, no. Fear in this is just because of the love of God. I'm going to, because of, because of who God is, I submit myself unto you. And you submit yourself unto me. And now this part, I love how Paul, because Paul breaks the thing down. Why you submit? Why submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord? See, the thing is, when you when you begin to look at this thing, what, why? How can you submit yourself to your supervisor, but you can't submit yourself to your husband? Understand, this is not no peace as in ruling. No, no, I'm just saying, not as in ruling. 
Now, there, there's a different. I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. Break down. Honey, about, I, said, I was just going to say, I'm about to be messy. Or you submit yourself to your pastor, but then can't say Oh, they're all, oh, oh, God. Oh, don't say that. Don't say that. Oh, dang. Oh, we had 25. They done went off now. Oh, man. Oh, my God. We had 20. We had 20 listeners. But that's real. Now we're down to two. Jesus. It's real. And, and it's no disrespect at all to the pastors. But it's a matter of submit yourself to your own oh. husband first. Like, see, trust me when I tell you that if there was no emphasis, no reason behind it, it wouldn't be in the Bible. Come on here now. So let us ask that question. Well, why did they say to submit yourself to your own husband first? Like, what's the importance of that? What is that? So you go out and you submit and you serve to all these other men, and then you come home to your own house. There is no peace because your husband doesn't feel loved. He doesn't feel respected because anything that he asks you to do or anything that they're trying, he's trying to form and to do and to build in his palace, in his home, in his where he is the priest, where he is the king of this particular place, it can't take place. So it's all hell is breaking loose because you out serving and submitting to other men, and you can't do it in your own household. So then my thing is, if you can't do it in your own household, how effective is your ministry outside the house? Because the thing is, and this goes for men too, because when you look at when you look at verse 25, and I'm going to jump ahead, but we're going to slide back up, but we're going to go ahead and hit this real quick. It says, husbands, love your wife. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. And then what I like, too, in Corinthians uh, 7 and 33, it says that, um, that, the husband, that the husband should love their wife and to care for her. Um, hold on a second. I messed that up. Yeah, hey, you did. Trying to read my notes. See I that? am. See that? that he should love his wife and to care for his wife um, over all of the other things in the world. So imagine that. I'm, man, let me tell you. Let me tell you this. Let me let me tell you this. Are y'all ready for this? I'm gonna give you a quick secret. Through the love of God, through marriage, is the structure of the church. So if you step outside of the structure of the church, then what kind of structure do you have in your home? And see, oftentimes, and when I'm talking about home, I'm talking about this sacred place between husband and wife. Where is that? It's not saying that you're not going to have any battles because you are. Because the thing is, if you don't have any, how can you draw closer? Right. That means with that, remember I was talking about that third cord that's that's not quickly broken. Intertwined. That when you're all linked up, it is that thing that makes you one, because when you begin to you know my microphone, because when you begin to when you begin to flow in the same direction, right? You're now moving in sync. So you have to understand what it is in the house. Cause I'm trying to tell you, man, being submissive is the first big thing, and I say that is the big thing. Why? Because you have to learn how to die to self. That means you might have to put your own yeah. selfish ambitions aside in order for you to submit. And see, all the time you go out, you want to call it hand peck, um, you want to call it um, jelly back, all that. I'll be honest with you. She, she said to me one time we was in our young years, she said, ah, you like a jelly back. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, really? I'm so bad, y'all. Of a jelly back. <laughs> ah, we're going to feel this jelly now. But I did not begin to move in the way of being, oh, I have dominance. No, it was like, honey, can't. no, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. No, we can't do that today. I don't have no problem. I'll tell you why. This is why. Uh, we can do it. Listen, I've already said we can't. Right. If you still want to go ahead and, and do it after I said it, guess what? Right. I can't, I can't help you. Why? Because now <laughs> you're still acting separate, not as one. Right. So that means whatever you do, how can God bless it? When you know that you're in the favor of God when you're saying no, God cannot bless it. Right. Because now you're out of obedience. Right. And it, it, guess what? It's vice versa. Because if she's been toiling all night to help me to do something, and I'm like, oh, man, I need to go and do X, Y, Z, 
And she's like, well, babe, do you really think that's the best thing to do doing what we got to take care of now? But then, ah, I going to do it. Everybody put it down, fall on me. Right. When she helped me to even guide me in that, in that right direction. So how can the thing I do be blessed? Right. Right. And then it, in uh, 1 Corinthians 7.33, too, it also talks about how the man should please his wife and how he should go out of his way to please his wife. And then that the wife should also do the same. So I love that because we're serving one another. So in that submission, it serve, we're serving one another because the man is, again, submissive to Christ, and then we are submitting to the man, and God is the head of everything. So it, we're bringing it all together, and it flows harmoniously when it's done the right way. Amen. And so as, you, as we begin to understand, so now we're just looking at the road. Right. So now – as we continue to do these things, man, I'm going to tell you, watch what God began to do even in your marriage. And so I'm, we got to start winding down because uh, <laughs> time is starting to draw now. I have a lot of football games getting ready to come on. I feel the Lord starting to say other stuff. <laughs> so, so I feel Jesus. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> but no. It's crazy. <laughs> but I want, I want for your homework for the next 30 days, you're right, Ray. I'm sorry. Hmm? What? Ray Mickles, it does go both ways. It does. We are submissive one to another. It goes both ways. You are absolutely right. We should do and make sure that our man, our husband is pleased as well. Um, but, again, it starts with, it starts with the, in, in the order and in the role. It starts with the husband. But guess what, though? Do you know, she, I had to teach her. He stuff. did. I had he to did. teach her. I was bad. And I say teach, I mean Understand, husband, when you are the leader in your home, guess what? You have to lead. Right, right, right. That's so, a part of the leading and the guiding. If you don't lead, I'm sorry, that is one, so I have to touch on that one next month. That's the next one. Um, And so you have to lead because there's a lot of things that she didn't know, so I had to lead. But then guess what? There's a lot of things that she knew that I didn't know, so guess what I had to do? I had to submit. And so understand this. <laughs> Ray, you crazy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. I'm trying Ray, to... you can't be doing that, man. <laughs> we live. Stop that. We're like, so I'm monitoring the comments on Facebook. <laughs> oh, he don't threw me all off. Look at Jesus. Look at that. I'm telling you. Look at Jesus. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I'm going to tell you, try this the next, for the next, uh, the next month, next 30 days, just try it. Try it. <laughs> you ain't sorry. <laughs> you know you ain't apologizing. Oh, um, so try it. It's your whole I'm a, Y'all listen. Y'all I send us some dare dare testimony. I double dare you guys. And what we'll do so that it's not so long for the next month is maybe every five days we'll jump in and maybe we could do a video or maybe we can do something or post something that we've done over this next 30 days so that you guys don't feel like you're alone. This is not a alone thing. This is not a um, – This we want this to be, co- you know, collaborative. We really want to be a blessing. We want to help. So, again, I just want to make sure that um, – just do a little power mode. I want to make sure that it's a blessing, and I want to make sure that it's a help. So it's not just you, you, you. We'll do this together because we aren't the experts. So we'll do this together. And then let's share the testimonies because, believe it or not, as we're going through this and as we're posting, it's blessing other people. Right. So I want us to be a blessing to other marriages, other couples, so that we all know that we're not alone, so that we all know that we can make it, that we can get through this. And let's do that. Like, can, can we challenge each other for the next 30 days? I, like, yeah. every, every five days, let's post something that we're doing and um, hashtag marriage takeover. Yeah. So that we can make sure that, you know, we're jumping in, we're doing it. And don't leave us out there alone, y'all. Like, <laughs> we get to post and we get to do it. Don't leave us out there. I'm going to be honest Please with you. Please join in with us. Jump, jump on in this thing. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell you, right, listen, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't care about all that virus stuff. I, I really don't. But with the thing that I do care about, I care about healthy marriages. The one thing that gets me a lot is when I hear people say, man, I wish my marriage was like yours. And all I can say is, it depends on how I'm feeling. Are you serious? 
<laughs> it depends on how I'm feeling. <laughs> but I always say you got to be willing to put in the work. So I'm going to tell you right now, if if a lot of y'all really knew our background, man, to get to where we are right now, it's is nobody but God. Nobody but God. Nobody he was intertwined but all God. through and through and through. And when we wanted to cut the rope, when we wanted to cut the rope, he said, I can't let you go. And now so we're, in turn, we want to be that blessing to everybody else. And now we're so becoming one flesh. Yeah. When I, now, when I, because every now we get our separation moment. <laughs> so I know you like, what do you mean? Now you becoming, because I'm telling you right now. It's a journey. Oh, my God. But I'm going to tell you right now. It's a beautiful now, journey. Oh, it's a wonderful journey. I love our marriage. So this is not a, you know, tear down a marriage. We love, I love our marriage. I love my husband. I'm in love with my husband. And I do it all over again. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. So, do me one thing tonight. Tonight. After when the game, sing, no. Oh, forget the game. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm not going to do it. I'm not messing with you. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. But do this tonight. Do this, <laughs> do this tonight. I want you to look at your spouse and begin to say nothing but the great things that you love about them and enjoy right. about them. Now, I you know, hey, that thing tend to go all night. All I'm going to say is turn the lights down low. You hear me? Put Hallelujah. You on, put you on some good music. Don't put you on no gospel church music. Hey, put stop. You on some good music. Just put on some good music. Me? <laughs> it might be some uh, jazz. Uh, it might be some of that T.D. Jakes. Ah, the favorite love song. Boy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't get on no satin sheets. They slide. Anyway, but God is good. <laughs> we love you guys. We want to honor the time. It is 7.56. We appreciate you guys for... We got four Thank minutes. We're going to ride this to the end. Hanging in here with us. Um, we're going to go ahead and pray out. If you have questions, want to reach out to us, um, let us know. If there's anybody on here who wants to have a relationship with God, you see us, see us having fun, see us acting goofy, all that great stuff. And I'm like, well, how can I, I know am not God? acting goofy. How can I know their God? I just want you to know that you just believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and oh. you have that awesome, phenomenal relationship with God, get into a Bible-based teaching church so that you can grow your relationship and you can enjoy. You don't have to be all mean, grumpy, and strict and all that great stuff to be saved and to love God. We are the goofiest, silliest, craziest, most down-to-earth couples you can ever, you know, come in contact with. And I'm going to tell you, if you already know what Jesus had to deal with with them poor <laughs> disciples, you should know. And right. He was very nice and relaxed. Right. We're not perfect, <laughs> but we love God. And so with that, we love you. We appreciate you. I'm going to pray out so that you guys can go and watch your game. I want to honor your time, 8 o'clock. We thank you. Don't forget, after this, go to your spouse and say what you love about it. <laughs> hey, I, hey, 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 missus, I don't care if you're still working on it. You better, you better go to it and say what you love and enjoy. <laughs> well, we thank you, God. We honor you. We thank you for the couples that have uh, joined us and stayed with us this hour. We thank you, Lord, for the couples and for everybody else who will join us and watch this video afterwards. Yes, God. We ask, God, that you will go in and you will penetrate each and every household. God, that you will restore the respect, yeah. that you will restore the love, yeah. that you will restore the broken marriages, that you would heal, God, in the name of Jesus. God, yes, that God. you would move obstacles and mountains, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. God, that you would be that rope, that Holy Spirit to intertwine yeah. each and every relationship. Relationship, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you only know how to do. Yes. God, that you would allow the men to rise up and to be the prophets in their homes, to yes, be the God. priests of their homes, yes. to be the kings of their homes. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, you have your way, God. Lord, allow them to, to spend that quality time with you, Lord, to get to know you, God, to get to to just love on you yes, and so that you can guide them so that they can lead their households, that they can lead their children, that they can lead their wives, that they yes. can love them, God, as you yes. want them to love them. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, allow us to be blessing. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We honor you for all those families, God, that are in the east, the west coast, east coast, uh, for the hurricane Florence that have been affected. I ask God that you would restore. Yes, God, God, that you would bring peace. Yes, God, God, that you would just help, have people to join in and to help out, God, yes, that God. nobody feels lost. Nobody yes, feels Left out, God. Yes, God. And Lord, you let them know, God, that they're never alone, mm. that you've never forgotten them, yes. and that God, we just honor you in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. We thank you. Thank Amen. You. Thank Amen. you, God. Amen. Thank you so much. Please hit us on this book, Book of Faces. <laughs> Facebook, YouTube. Yeah, all of those places because we really want to, we really want to know, not trying to be in your business, but we just really want to know. 
because we got to know. I just got. I just want to shout with you. How about that? And so just see, test, try it out, do your homework, and see where where it takes you. And I, I believe, and I trust God that you're gonna see the difference in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Mary, take over signing off. Mahala. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Marriage Takeover. Connect with us on Facebook at Marriage Takeover. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace, with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is... Is 732 499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Reverend Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work for an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life for a word in season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month, join Reverend Curtis, Reverend Novena, and Minister Jordana for Bold and Beautiful, a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. All broadcast times are Eastern Standard Time. Hey family, I want to introduce our newest broadcast that joined us in 2018, The Marriage Take Over the Body of One, hosted by Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson. They will be addressing a wide range of topics that will serve to encourage you and to strengthen your marriage. So remember that's every third Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, The Marriage Take Over over the body of one. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, so all of your gifts to this ministry are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com, and click on our donation page. Oh, give